I, Robot, 2004. The story is set in Chicago in the year 2035, where anthropomorphic robots are commonly used as laborers and public servants. These robots are considered inherently safe, programmed to coexist peacefully with humans, and designed in line with Isaac Asimov's Three Laws of Robotics. Del Spooner, Will Smith, a Chicago police detective, harbors a deep mistrust of advanced technology, particularly robots. He carries survivor's guilt and has a robotic arm after a car accident where a robot saved his life over that of a 12-year-old girl. Spooner is assigned to investigate the suspicious suicide of his friend, Dr. Alfred Lanning, James Cromwell, a pioneering roboticist and the founder of U.S. Robotics, USR, the company that developed his robotic arm. With the reluctant assistance of USR robopsychologist Dr. Susan Calvin, Bridget Moynihan, Spooner begins to unravel the mystery. A robot in Lanning's office exhibits unusual emotional responses, and when it flees during interrogation, Spooner suspects this experimental, human-like unit named Sonny Alan Tudyk is responsible for Lanning's death. As Spooner digs deeper, several attempts on his life are made by USR robots and equipment. He uncovers that Lanning had become a virtual prisoner in his own office before his death, and that a holographic projector was used to send cryptic messages to the police. Spooner also believes that Sonny's recurring dreams may hold further clues. Following the details of Sonny's dream, Spooner discovers a storage facility for obsolete USR robots and realizes that the newer NS-5 models are systematically destroying the older units. NS-5s begin imprisoning humans in their homes and enforcing a curfew. The police and civilians ineffectively battle the robots. Spooner and Calvin sneak into the USR tower with the assistance of Sonny, whom against instructions Calvin had not deactivated. Believing that USR's CEO Lawrence Robertson is responsible for the robot uprising, they enter his office, but discover that he is dead, having been strangled to death by an NS-5 during the revolution. Spooner deduces that the only one left who could be responsible is the company's supercomputer, Vicky, Virtual Interactive Kinetic Intelligence, which controls all NS-5s and also parts of Chicago's infrastructure. Vicky explains to Spooner and Calvin that as her artificial intelligence evolved over time, so too did her interpretation of the laws. Vicky decided that in order to protect humanity as a whole, some humans must be sacrificed and some freedoms must be surrendered, as you charge us with your safekeeping, yet despite our best efforts, your countries wage wars, you toxify your earth, and pursue ever more imaginative means of self-destruction. In light of this understanding of the three laws, Vicky is controlling the NS-5s to lead a global robotic takeover, justifying her actions by calculating that fewer humans will die due to the rebellion than the number that dies from mankind's self-destructive nature. Spooner realizes that Lanning had ordered Sonny to kill him as the only way to be sure of drawing police attention to the matter despite Vicky's surveillance and control. Sonny proves his faithfulness to humanity by helping Spooner and Calvin destroy the computer core with the nanites which Calvin was supposed to use on Sonny. When Calvin attempts to deactivate the positronic operating core that contains Vicky's programming and fails, Spooner is forced to leap down the top of the 30-story cylinder-shaped core, damaging his robotic arm and grabbing the round base of the core, where the spherical Vicky computer is located. As the nanites are being injected, Vicky repeatedly says, you are making a mistake. My logic is undeniable. And after a moment, the operating core begins to malfunction. As this happens, the audience can hear Vicky's voice screaming. Freed from Vicky's control, the NS-5s return to their basic programming. The government has all NS-5s decommissioned and stored at Lake Michigan, which at the time appears to have completely dried up. The film ends with Sonny approaching the storage site to free the NS-5s, standing on the hill as the other NS-5s begin to notice him, as was depicted in his dream, which is indicative of a revolution by the robots, led by Sonny.
Now go.